Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with a new show. The show is not new. We're just getting caught up because yeah. we've been busy. And a whole lot of you all were like, y'all need to check out Your Honor. Yeah. So as soon as power went off, we were like, okay, bet. We're going to check this skit out. Hooked. Yeah. When I say hooked, I yeah. mean hooked. We were, watching, <laughs> we were watching this show every day after work, yeah. getting caught up. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through all of the episodes, but this is more going to be, this is going to be more of a just, we're going to run it. Yeah, we're just going to talk about we're it. We're going to talk about it. This is not yeah. a real recap. But we will give some spoilers. So if you have not seen the show and you're interested in watching this show, go ahead and cut this skit off. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do the YouTube thing. If this is, if you were new to this channel, go ahead and consider that. So, blah, 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 blah. Pause. If you are new to this channel, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Yeah. We are giving out the C19 discount to the end of the year, which means that a subscription is free. And if you are a person that has been subscribed to our channel for a while and you just happen to stumble back over here because we're doing something new, welcome yeah. back. Listen, and then tomorrow, while I got you on the line, we're going to come in with a current recap because the show does air on tonight. So yeah. tomorrow we'll come out with our current recap and we're going to run it like we always do. Exactly. But uh, listen... The show, the backdrop of the show is, is that it's taking place in New Orleans, right? Mm -hmm. And the show kind of starts off where you don't really understand what's happening, but you see that there's a judge and the judge is sitting on the bench and he has a case in front of him. And you could tell that there was some corruption going on within the police department, but you also have this judge that is doing his due diligence and saying, what you're saying isn't making a whole lot of sense. They were trying to charge this lady with having um with um drug possession and saying uh -huh. that and the cop was saying that he saw her take some drugs and shove it up into herself in a bathroom. But the house in which he said that this all took place in is what they consider a shotgun oh, house. Yep. So which means from the front door you can see what's happening in the back door. And all of the rooms are off the sides of the hallways. Yep. So how is it possible for you from the front door to see her? putting drugs up in her uh and now you're swearing under oath that yeah. this is what you saw so immediately oh, I Lord. yeah so immediately uh -huh. I was impressed with this judge because I was like bet this is a good one like he 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 he's taking his um, position mm -hmm. seriously he's not one of those ones that's just like boom next I'm gonna let's hear what the cop said next. and then I'll make my sentence yeah. yeah so I was like okay cool bet then we end up over at this scene where we see this um this family and you could tell that they had some money behind them. Like, uh -huh. th this was old money behind them. And they gave their son a motorcycle. One of the motorcycles that the that father... That was a nice goddamn yeah. motorcycle, too, man. <laughs> but it was one that the father wanted. Yeah. But they ended up giving it to the son. Then we see this other son, which is the judge's son, and his name is Adam. The judge's name is Michael. They call him Judge or they call him Michael. Michael. Mm -hmm. So we see Adam in a bed with someone, but the girl looks significantly older than him. Mm -hmm. So I had my eye on that the entire time. So we see Adam get up and the girl get up and she's like, bet, I got to go ahead and go to school. I'm like, is he bucking the teacher? Oh, <laughs> so we see Adam get up. He has, I think it was a card in his hand and he... He clips a couple of flowers from the garden or whatever, and he gets in this raggedy Volvo, <laughs> and he's pooching to what we consider the urban side of town. Yeah. So I'm like, what is he when, doing? Yeah, what the hell like, is he Where going, are you man? going? Yeah. So he takes a picture of this woman, and he puts it in front of this convenience store, and he lays it down with these flowers. But you can see that there, there are some black people that are walking towards him looking like they meaning like, him no good. Exactly. And I'm looking at Adam, and I'm like, I'm not trying to be funny. Even as a black person, I would put myself in the middle of that hood. But if I see a gang of people walking towards me, why are you still there? Yeah. <laughs> so he did. He hurry up and he got up out of there. But he triggered his asthma mm -hmm. while he was doing so. So he's getting out there and then eventually there was somebody chasing him. Long story short, we have this boy. And he, he, his last name is Baxter, but they don't know this yet. Yeah. We have this Baxter boy. On his motorcycle, we have this guy, Adam, in his car, 
having an asthma attack, trying to reach for his, his inhaler, reaching, 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 and eventually he just went ahead and just did one of these moves. And yeah. you know when you make this uh, move right here, yeah, the you can't see the road follows. no more. Yep, mm -hmm. he ends up hitting this boy on the bike. This is where it all just went to hell for me. Hmm. Because I was like, what is he doing? He gets out the car. Yeah. And he and this boy's tore up. I had to look away, so I can't even tell you the condition of this boy's body. When I saw a leg twisted that, that way, yeah. I had to stop Love looking. Way, yeah. <laughs> so he gets out and he's looking at this boy and he's standing over his body. And I'm like, what are you doing? But now I realize that he was trying to help him in some kind of way, but he didn't have the breath to do so. Mm hmm so eventually he went to his car i think and this might be out of order but he ended up getting his inhaler eventually yeah he did but he was trying to call 911 as well but he couldn't speak yeah because he could not get his breath um at that time so the 911 operator is like let me know can i help you where are you so they're you know of course they're due their due diligence and trying to trace the call and whatnot but they don't know what's happening. You have this boy over here that's dying. Like he's choking on his own blood. Like one time the blood just it's spewed oof. out of his mouth. Yeah. So you know that this boy is not going to make it. So when Adam realized that this boy that he just hit on his bike isn't going to make it, he fled the scene. Yep. Panicked. So he ended up running out, of, almost running out of gas. I guess he didn't have no money. I don't know what the deal was. But then he stole gas at a gas station. I was like, this is not going to be All good. The wrong you hit move. somebody. Yep. <laughs> you ran. Then you end up at a gas station and you and don't even pay. Pay for the gas. Yep. Okay. That's going to come back. So he ends up going home, cleaning up. I mean, just wiping everything down because the, the car has blood all over the front and underneath. He cleans it up and he eventually tells his father what he had did. His father being the honorable man uh -huh, the honorable judge. that he is, he's like, you know what? We're going to have to go down to the police station. Yep. I can do what I can, but I'm going to be honest with you. This is what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You will not get any bail, and we have to do the right thing. And I said, come on, daddy. Yeah, uh-huh. Do it come right. On. Yeah. <laughs> you will take your son to jail just like you would anybody else's son mm -hmm. that did the same thing exactly. if they were sitting yep. In front of you while you on that bench. I like the judge. Okay. So the daddy, the judge, Judge Michael was like, you know what? When they got to the police station, he told his son, you stay in the car. Yep. Let me go and set this up for you. And I'll be back for you. Whew. When the judge went inside, a lot of people don't recognize him as the judge <laughs> inside the police station. Let's go ahead and say that. So he gets there and they're like, what you need? What you need? What you need? And eventually he looks to his right mm -hmm. and he sees a family that you could tell that he recognized. Mm -hmm. And then the woman, you can tell when someone just got that news as she buckled, as she fell backwards and the husband caught her. And Judge Michael kind of did that move where you just like, vanish like, and I fade away. I can't believe this just happened to them. <laughs> so, Judge Michael backed all the way. Yeah, back, when yeah. we say backpedal, uh -huh. he backpedaled all the way back out of that police station. And his son, Adam, was walking towards him. And he was like, turn around and go back. He was like, Dad, but Dad God, you, you said we had to do the right he thing. He said, get in the, the car. car now. We need to turn around <laughs> and go back. Eventually, he explained to his son, he said, in there, I just saw such and such Baxter. The boy you hit was a Baxter. Mm -hmm. The Baxters are the hardest hardcore criminals that run these streets. Yep. That is not a family that you want to have any kind of problems yep. with. Now, for a judge to say some mess like that. Oh, oh yeah. They run them streets. He said, I don't want no parts of this. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to make this go away. I said, Judge, come on now. You need to reconsider this. Like, this might just have to be one that your, your son has to take for the team. But he knew probably he was going to take one for the team, too. Woo! Yeah. <laughs>
So the judge has this friend. You know, there's always a black friend that knows somebody from the streets. And you always know mm -hmm. there's a black politician. I hate to say it. And yeah. I hate that it's a stereotype because most of the time the stereotype is true. There's a black politician that is trying to do good by his community, but he still has his ear to the streets. Yep. And they can go this way. So he's a little rough around the edges. Or he mine. can go that way. <laughs> It's almost like most of us. Yeah. I can be corporate right now and be hood right now. Yeah. It just depends on which one you need. Exactly. So his name is um, Charlie. So he calls Charlie and tells Charlie. And him and Charlie are best friends. He tells Charlie, he was like, I need I need a favor for you from you. I got a card and I need to disappear. I need it yeah. to disappear. No questions asked. So Charlie's like, what do you mean you need a card to disappear? So he knows yeah. some, some skit with it. But he don't want to ask no questions. Yeah. But Charlie has some people in the streets that, hey, if I give a call to this one, this one can make it happen. Yep. Long story short, it was set up so that this car, this Volvo, which used to be um, Adam's mom's mm -hmm. and Michael's wife's car. Yeah. That's why Adam was down there in the hood because she was murdered down there while taking pictures. Mm -hmm. It was her car. He wants to get this car. It just needs to go away. Because this is the evidence of a day gone wrong. They arranged for the car. And, Char and Charlie a good friend. Yeah. To, be, to get rid of a car and not tell me exactly why I'm getting rid of it. Yeah, that's a good friend that, right there. That's why you ask questions. <laughs> so they arranged for this guy named uh, Kofi. Yeah. Kofi, Kofi Jones. Kofi Jones was one of those guys that you could tell he's a good kid. Never really been in any trouble, but he 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 he'll do a, some yeah. strange things yeah. for a little piece of change. He got pulled into the life, so he ends up going to the judge's neighborhood, which I thought was just really bad writing mm -hmm. from the get go. Because why did you send this black boy in a hoodie to this rich ritzy neighborhood? Yeah, especially by the car. way he was moving, he kept putting his he kept hood putting on, his hood, and yeah. off and all like. Yeah. So he steals the car, and on his way to taking the car to the chop shop. He gets pulled over by the police for running a red light. He goes to jail. Okay. Eventually, he was getting ready to be released. Because he, he got some mouth on him. Like, he could talk his way mm -hmm. out of a wet paper bag. So, eventually, he was getting ready to be released. And then, all roads started leading to Ford Motor Company. Car. Mm -hmm. Baxter Boy. This. That. Oh, hell no. We have the person that hit that Baxter boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say, I know y'all not going I know y'all finna, yeah, finna pin this on this boy like it's mine. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly what happened. Yep. And the judge told Adam, say, listen, you keep your goddamn mouth shut. We all do bad things sometimes, and this is just going to have to be our bad thing. We're going to take this one to the grave. We're going to let this boy get what he gets. But the judge also had secured an attorney for him so that even though he was going to get some skit behind something he didn't even do, yeah, that he was going to get the lesser end of the skittish yeah. stick. Which was still messed up. Yeah. I mean, either way you look at it, it was messed up. Let me tell you, Kofi, they beat him. The police yeah. beat him. Gassed him. Gassed him. Yeah. Until he... While he was hogtied. Yeah. So don't forget that. <laughs> Until he admitted to a crime that he, that he did it. not commit at all. And see, the thing about it is, it's so complex because Charlie has some guys in the street. These guys in the street take care of Kofi's family. Uh huh. So the guys on the street is telling Kofi, this is a solid that you just going to have to do. Because if you don't do it, we're not going to keep your family mm -hmm. protected or fed. Yeah. So he's he's got it on both ends. Yep. You got the police department that don't whoop you, beat you up. You gonna take this plea, and you got the guy that's your homeboy that takes care of the streets and make sure your family eats and, and survives in this bad neighborhood. Telling you this is what you gotta do to keep yeah, your family you safe. So you can't snitch. So he he took the charge. Yep. But everybody, even the attorney, knows. That he he didn't ain't do it. it. Yeah. She looked in his face and said, I can tell by your eyes that you, you were beat and that and you gas. were gassed. Yep. You don't even have to tell me. I already know how it goes. But I need you to tell me 
that this is what they made you say. Yep. <sighs> Y'all. Yeah. So we, we're getting up to the point where the Baxter boy is get ready to be buried. And we're going to miss a, a whole lot of parts because as we start doing these recaps, we're going to catch Yeah, you. we're going to catch Yeah, we're It's gonna, all yeah. going to come full <laughs> circle. So this Baxter boy has a brother that's in prison. And I mm -hmm. think he was in San Quentin. So mm -hmm. they want to get him transported down here to New Orleans so that he can go, go to, to this funeral. funeral. Yeah. And they're trying to get permission to do so. Eventually... They did. They got him down there to this funeral. But guess what prison or the or jail he's being held at? The same one. one that Kofi is being held at, right? Yep. So they we see that the judge has, because he's a runner. So he was running that morning and he purposely was spying on the funeral mm -hmm. to see what was going on. And he saw the move that was being made and he saw the hit being yep. put on Kofi because what happened was you see the prison bus then you see another vehicle pull up they release guards yep. they exchange guards and then they were like um the mother wanted to embrace her son yep. the prisoner and they was like no this doesn't happen and they was like you need to let this happen you you and the Baxter family are prejudiced they're racist as well yep. so they looked at the white um officer was like you know how it is you have a mother they looked at the black officer and said y'all's got <laughs> mothers mom. too yep <laughs> i said for that reason right there you wouldn't have got permission to hold your son just for that <laughs> well the mother got permission to embrace her son and when she embraced her son she told her son the name of the person mm -hmm. that killed the brother her son they're in the same freaking jail. Yep. Judge saw that go down and just took off running. He went and he called, I think it was the deputy sheriff. Yeah. Or whoever, whoever it was. Over, yeah. To try to get it to switch. Yeah. And was like, you need to put Kofi in protective <laughs> custody now. Like, put him in isolation now. You could tell that this man wasn't going to do it. Nah, nah. He said, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay sure got, it, got it, got it. Backs the boy was returned back to that jail and his presence spoke volumes. Yeah, everybody was like... <laughs> and they was like, oh, that's the Baxter family there. They run everybody. They run the guards. They run the police department. They run mm -hmm. things down here. Kofi know that he is bucked. Yeah. So he told his cellmate about everything that was going down and the cellmate pretty much was like, you can't even run from yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. can't run from this right here yeah because you remember when he first got in the dude was like whatever you need man we got your back yeah until the backsters name came up was like ain't nothing we can do for the yeah you know they run this whole joint so later on that night we saw that kofi's cell no he was called to go to the infirmary yeah kofi was like i've been to the infirmary so he knew something was up mm -hmm. so they put him in the infirmary we saw the light on the camera go off mm-hmm I said, okay, this is where he meets his fate. Kofi ended up going down there to the Baxter. Boy, I guess he was like, if if I'm going to die, I'm just going to go ahead and man up I, I and think do the it. dude in the cell told him to do that. Just go ahead yeah. and just confront him because you're going to be running. That's why I think he told him. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was the end of Kofi, y'all. Yeah. Kofi was murdered that night. Homeboy cracked his head. But, I was, but I was hoping that. Beat him to a pulp. I was hoping that he was going to make it through it, though. Me too. I was hoping, yeah. So I don't know if he even told the Baxter boy, listen, I didn't do it. This wasn't what had happened. That I stole a car thinking I'm taking it to the chop shop. So whoever was that was really driving that car was the one who killed your brother, not me. Yeah. I, I don't I, even know if he got that far. Yeah. I, either way, he wasn't going to believe him because he was prejudiced. I mean, they, the Baxter's is prejudiced. So this is a black dude that appears that they killed his brother. So... He was going to go at him either way. So Judge Michael gets the news about it. Judge Michael has to take all of the stuff over to Kofi's family. Let them know that the boy was dead and all that good stuff. Remember when I told you about the case that he was presiding over about the drugs being rammed up in your uh-uh mm -hmm. in a shotgun house? That's Kofi's mom. That's Kofi's mom, yep. So now you've helped save her. From a setup, because that's yep. what it was. 
and now you have served her son up yep. on a platter to be murdered. For something he didn't even do. And now you have to sit in this woman's face and give her this news. In freaking sane. Yeah. So now we have the Baxter family. They ready. Like, it's a war. It's a war. And what we have found out was that there is this woman named, what's her name? Lil Mo? Big Mo? Big Mo. Big Mo, yeah. Big Mo runs the hood. This female. She runs the hood. The Baxter family. They should have had her on power. They should have. <laughs> they should have had her on power. <laughs> she ain't scared of the Baxters. No. But she knows her place. Exactly. And eventually she ended up having a conversation with the Baxters because the Baxters decided, well, it was the mama. Yeah. The father. He a little bit, he a little bit more level here than the mama. The she, father likes to make sure that yeah, A matches with B. Yeah, B we ain't gonna create C. no unnecessary smoke. That's his thing. Mama wants to kill anybody the, yep. that she thinks had anything to do with her son exactly. dying. Yep. I don't know if I can blame her on that. Mama called the shots to have Kofi's family's house blow up. up. I was like, come on now. The mama and all of the children yep. except for one who had just went to the store yep. for his family. When he was walking back towards his house, the house just blew up. So now you have this boy that's out here without a family that pretty much got drafted to the streets by default. Yep. Because what else is he going to do? And he ends up in Big Mo's house. Big Mo decided to, she was going to give uh, Mr. Baxter a visit and said, what you did over there on my corner? You ain't had permission to do, do that. Yep. And you did it for no reason. She said, let me go ahead and give you a timeline to make you research and figure out what's really happening around here. She said the day that Kofi stole that car was the day after, after. your son was killed. Mm -hmm. You need to connect the dots. He was getting rid of the car. He didn't commit the murder. And he was like, so you're telling me. He, she said, I'm telling you so that you can find the right person. Yeah. And if you want to create a war... We can do that. Yep. But your smoke was in the wrong direction. You killed a family for no reason. Then it was funny when he said, well, I need to do my due, due my diligence. My due diligence. She said, who that? Who is that? Who your, that? your priest? <laughs> yeah. So you better tell Mr. Due Diligence. He better hurry up. <laughs> and she walked up out of his face. So now the daddy, the Mr. Baxter, is like, hold on, what's going on? So he's starting to get his, his, his crew, his goons, mm -hmm. to really research. Now, mind you. When the son first got killed, they went to the scene. They found an inhaler. So they're doing DNA mm -hmm. on the inhaler to try to figure out who it belongs to, but they ain't got that yet. Yep. Now they know that whole something ain't right. Long story short, remember the story about him stealing the car? I mean, um, um, Adam stealing the gas? That ended up biting him in his tail. Yeah. See, his daddy thought that he was gonna make all that go away yep. by befriending the guy that owns the um the gas station. The gas station. Yeah. And he ended up getting close enough to this man to um erase the, the footage. video footage. Yeah. But homeboy still told on him. Cause they had it in the newspaper. Cause stuff is starting to come to a head now. Yeah. Um judges in the newspaper somebody <laughs> has a burner phone that they put in his chamber i mean in his um desk, the desk on, the, on the bench saying they know he know that his son did the hit and run yeah so yep. stuff is starting to come to a head so because of that now his pet his picture the car all of that is in the paper so the baxter man went to the gas station was like do you know this man right here he was like oh yeah that's yeah, the guy yeah he came oh yeah <laughs> are you the one that's messing with his wife he was like what are you talking about I said yeah he came and he told me that somebody messed with his wife and he wanted to see who was driving his car. <laughs> so now they know yep. that the judge, at least they know the judge, has something to do with, with, the, this hit with the murder of their son. Yep. And that's pretty much where we're caught up to right now. There is a lot that is and going it's, yeah, on. It is crazy, yeah. I and I love that they got, I think they're doing what, 10 episodes or something like that? I haven't even looked that something far. Like, yeah, but I'm, I'm, Cause yeah. Because where are we on I'm six? Yeah, so it'll be six um, starting night. So. Yeah, so it comes on tonight. Listen, if you don't have the Showtime app or you not subscribed to it, you need to get go subscribed. On yeah, go and get hooked it's in. It's going to be you. money well spent just for this show alone. Yeah, so I say because they're hour long show, so if you want to catch up, this would be a perfect time to catch up. You know, sign up tonight yeah. <laughs> and watch. Go back to season one of you. I mean, not season one, episode one. 
I if have you great hopes for the judge, man. Yeah, now man. Now the judge the buck all yeah. for the love of his son. Yeah, and I was like, finally, that's a judge in the system. You know, I know it's a show, but a judge in the system that's looking out for us. Because you remember in the episode where he had ran up to the house, and we was like, "Why did this he... dude run up to the house?" And then that looking the, strange. The, the lady's son was like, "Are you the police? You're the police." So he was verifying it then that it, you know, that he that police officer couldn't see that around woman the in, around the corner. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know how I feel about the judge now, seeing it all. This, and, you know, he got Kofi killed. So, yeah. I say, I be God darn. <laughs> And then it happened so quickly. I was like, Kofi ain't going to die this day. going to quit. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, because the episode went off when he said, when he went to um, the Baxter's boys' cell and said, I'm Kofi Jones. Then that ended the episode. And when the episode came on the next one, he was, he was in a body bag. And I was like, nah. Now, mind you, the Baxter um, son, I mean, the Baxter, the inmate Baxter. He's out now because yeah. he only had two weeks left on his sentencing. Yeah. And because there's a big thing about if an inmate from another facility comes to another facility and kills someone while they're there, I think they said feds can come in and take over that particular um, prison or jail. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know what? The insides was like, no, no, no. We're nah. not going to have that happen. Nope. So this murder never happened. I said, God, God. So Miss Little Baxter boy. This didn't go against his record, so his time didn't get extended because it never happened. But I'm going to tell you the person that we really need to pay attention to is that daggone police officer Nancy. I was going to say Nancy Pelosi. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I can't remember her last name, but her name Nancy. Ever since the oh, judge... Oh, Nancy going to get it. Ever since um, the judge had told Nancy the whole story about how everything went down, you could tell she was looking at like, this is a bull sketch story. Mm -hmm. But... You the judge, so I'm going to keep on, you know. So, yeah. And Adam gets on my nerves because we didn't say any of this. But the entire time all of this stuff has been going on, Adam has been acting weird. His, conscience, his conscience got the yeah. best of him. Yeah. He's been showing up to the courthouse. Taking pictures. I mean, just being weird. Going back to the scene, taking pictures. I mean, it just. But let me tell you where it is into that. And I almost forgot this part right here. Y'all ready for this? See, the Baxter family, mama, daddy, older son, that one that's in, that was in prison, now he's out. The younger son, the one that's murdered, and a sister. Yep. Who did Adam know get hooked up with? The goddamn sister. Yep. I almost, yep, almost forgot about that. Yep. So Adam now is forming a relationship with the sister. Mm-hmm. He knows it. She don't know who he is. Yep. But he definitely knows who she is because he'd been watching and researching her. She ended up approaching him because she noticed him for being an individual. He went to the freaking bedroom. Mm -hmm. So now they're connecting about loss. Adam lost his mama to murder. She lost her brother to a hit and run murder. Mm -hmm. So now they're connecting over that. I said if he ended up <laughs> over at the family dinner, I'm judged. Like, he, uh Put him down yourself. Call. Well, the judge can't... The ju yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. But yeah. I'm going to tell you who I do like. I like Judge Michael's mother-in-law. Oh, yeah. She the business now. Yeah, yeah. She she plays no games. No. No games at all. <laughs> and y'all y'all going to be able to see more of them. But that's all we're going to talk about, like I said. Yeah, y'all check it out. Yeah, Check we, it out. Y'all. We've given y'all enough of the backstory so that you will know that this is this some real. And I'm pretty sure if you, if you haven't got the, the Showtime app, I think they have a trial going on now. They always got a trial going on. So check it out with the trial. And that way you can check it out. See if you like it. If you don't, you can cancel it before they charge you any money. Hey, you can cash at me. $50, I'll give you my password. <laughs> Straight for the VA. The Dirty Dirty Shout. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.